The Mariners did exactly what they needed to do against the Tigers last night. Chris Flexen earned his vesting option for 2023, and Jared Kelnick has unfollowed the Mariners on Instagram? Let's talk about it here on the Locked On Mariners podcast. Colby, hit it. You are Locked On Mariners, your daily Seattle Mariners podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Locked On Mariners podcast brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered all season long with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online is where the game starts. It is Wednesday, August 31st, 2022. And thank you so much for making us your first listen of the day. We are free and available on all platforms with new episodes dropping every Monday through Friday. I am your host, Teddy Gonzalez, joined as always by my co host, Colby Patnode. We cover the Mariners over at InsideTheMariners.com for Fan Nation over on the Sports Illustrated. Australian Network. Be sure to follow the show on Twitter at LO underscore Mariners. Follow Inside the Mariners at Inside Mariners. You can follow me at Dane Gonzalez, that's D-A-N-E, G-N-Z-L-Z, and Colby at CPAT11, that's C-P-A-T-1-1. Be sure to also check out our Patreon over at patreon.com forward slash control the zone. We post two additional podcasts on there every single week. Again, that is patreon.com forward slash control the zone. And if this is your first time joining us here on the Locked On Mariners podcast, welcome to the show. If you like what you hear, give us a follow or subscribe wherever you're listening to this and if you're watching us on youtube hit the subscribe button turn on the notification bell and give this video a thumbs up we greatly appreciate it on the show today the mariners waxed the tigers by a score of nine to three last night we'll talk george kirby the offense and all that in just a second and uh, you probably heard by now that chris flexen triggered his vesting option for 2023 last night but what does that mean we'll tell you later on in the show and then we'll dive into this jared kelnick Instagram thing. He's unfollowed the Mariners and deleted some Mariners related posts. We'll get into all that later on in the show. And uh, apologies real quick for uh, no show yesterday. Uh, if you missed our posts on uh, Twitter or here, uh, I, uh, I'm, I'm a little under the weather. We weren't able to record yesterday. Uh, feeling a bit better today, though. So we are back on the mics. But again, apologies for no episode yesterday. Now let's get into this game for the Mariners last night. 9-3 win over the Detroit Tigers to open up this three-game set down in Detroit. And the offense exploded against Matt Manning, who uh, entered this game uh, with a 2-3-1 ERA uh, through seven starts, of course, um, and uh, had been uh, using his slider really effectively. Just didn't have the slider yesterday, though, and the Mariners were able to jump all over him uh, for, uh, you know, big, big night, uh, you know, out of this offense, which has struggled uh, mightily as of late. Uh, they explode for for night runs, as I said, thanks in part to Ty France, who had one of the most impressive home runs you'll see at Comerica Park. Uh, hit it to a place that hasn't been hit to uh, it's since 2008, since they started tracking home runs in 2008. So that's very impressive. Uh, Jordan uh, Jordan Schusterman, I believe, of uh, Cespedes Family Barbecue uh, posted that, the, uh, the home run tracker at Comerica Park, and that Home run, that little dot landed right where just no home run has ever been hit. Uh, Cal Raleigh also uh, got on the board with a home run himself. And then the Mariners were just able to move the line uh, against Matt Manning, particularly in that six-run third inning that they had. Uh, Will Vess, Mariners legend, of course, also uh, made an appearance in that inning. The Mariners were able to get a couple more runs off of him. Uh, but, you know, they were just playing really good baseball, this offense. And then on top of that, George Kirby dominated this Tigers lineup. And uh, Chris Flexen, who we'll talk about later on, uh, was able to close the door uh, with uh, four solid innings out of the bullpen. Uh, but let's start with this offense. What did you see out of this offense last night, Colby? Yeah, it was um, it was different. Uh, the Mariners scored runs, plural, without needing to hit the big home run to do it. Uh, they certainly got the home runs. They hit three of them. Uh, Carlos Santana added a two run shot later in the game. Um, but yeah, it was, you know, it, it started out looking like, Oh, well, there's a solo home run. Oh, there's another solo home run. It's going to be one of those nights. Huh? Uh, and then they just kind of exploded. I, I think it was, um, is it Raleigh or Toro got on base? Uh, it was, it was Toro and then Julio mm -hmm. hit a double and then it was a walk and then it was, or a strikeout, then it was a single, 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 and it just kind of ran down the line. Uh, every Mariner, with the exception of Jesse Winker, got on base last night. Uh, they all, Every Mariner starter had a hit. Um, there were 17 hard hit balls from the Mariners last night. Uh, they just tattooed the the Tigers pitching, uh, particularly Manning, um, but they did have, you know, they, 
they put some some good swings on uh on Daniel Norris as well, who pitched uh, the bulk of this game. Uh, so yeah, overall it was just a, a top to bottom uh, clinic and in, in keeping the line moving, uh, getting the next guy to the plate and all that stuff, uh, which is nice to see. We haven't seen it. We saw it a few Fridays ago uh, against Oakland. Um, but then we remember how those next two games went. So here's hoping they, uh, they keep the momentum going and they keep swinging it because, uh, they need to. And, and when the Mariners are a team that can string hits together, they're very, very dangerous. Um, and they kind of have to start becoming that a little bit more because despite, you know, how many home runs, how many runs they've scored on home runs, they're not a prolific home run hitting team. Uh, you know, Julio certainly has power. Uh, Gino has power. Um, Raleigh has power, but none of those guys are like 40 home run guys. Uh, you know, Ty France and Jesse Winker are really more 20 home run types uh, than they are anything else. Uh, and then obviously you're not going to get any power whatsoever from, from Adam Frazier um, and whoever's playing shortstop for you uh, yesterday. That was Adam Frazier. So uh, yeah, they, they do have to, you know, start to string some hits together. They're going to have to hit some doubles with guys on second and things like that. Uh, so yesterday was a good start. Hopefully they continue it today against Tyler Alexander. Um, no JP Crawford in the lineup still. Uh, Mason McCoy is with the team. He's on the taxi squad. So I, I would imagine that there's a pretty real chance that JP hits the IL here, um, in the next day or two, we'll see how that goes. Um, but I guess on the good injury front news, Sam Haggerty is, uh, is back in the lineup today playing left field. Uh, so, uh, Scott said that, you know, his plan was to get Haggerty in there against both of the lefties that are going, uh, in the series. So, Kind of feels like maybe they've they've settled on a bit of a role for for Sam uh, starting against lefties, being used off the bench against uh, righties. Uh, so we'll see, but that should help. It's another guy who makes a ton of contact, puts the ball in play, um, and that's that's kind of what this offense needs at the bottom of their lineup. Hopefully, JP can get in there tomorrow. Uh, but overall, the offense was was simply great. It's it's one of the best performances of the year. And if not for. Miguel Cabrera, George Kirby would have been running a perfect game for a while in this one. Uh, he gave up a couple of hits to Miguel Cabrera, and that was really it for Kirby. He was dominant in this one. What did you see out of Kirby? Yeah, kind of an interesting start from Kirby. It was mostly fastball and two-seamer. Uh, didn't throw a ton of off-speed stuff. Uh, didn't really need to. Uh, he was cruising until the fifth inning, ran into a little bit of trouble. Um, nothing serious because at that point it's already, you know, it's already nine, nothing. So who cares, but, uh, just ran into a little bit of trouble. Uh, it was a really good opportunity for Seattle to short, uh, George Kirby start. He could have gone another inning pretty easily if, if they needed him to, but you know, why push it? Uh, you have a young guy you're trying to, to keep fresh. So you roll with, you roll with flexin, uh, after that, but Kirby, you know, it was, it's five innings, only two hits allowed, walked a guy shocking, uh, struck out, uh, struck out five. And by only the way, s- that shouldn't have mm-hmm. been a walk. No, <laughs> it's a very good thing this game was not close at all because that strike zone was awful. There was an inning mm-hmm. where the uh, Mariners were up to bat. I forget which inning it was, but I counted at least six strikes that were not actually strikes, and very clearly, like not even in the buffer zone that apparently umpires yeah. have, like just completely outside, like clear as day, should not have been strikes. So, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, it likes a kind of a weird day. Kirby, five strikeouts. He only had six whiffs um, on a 79 pitches. So didn't have like amazing swing and miss stuff, but he was throwing so many strikes. The The Tigers took a lot of pitches that were strikes. Uh, we saw, I think, three uh, front door two seamers to the lefties uh, for, called for strike three. Uh, Kirby was just cruising uh, until that fifth ran a little bit of issue. But again, he finished with 79 pitches in five innings. Easily could have gone another, uh, but no reason to push him. He just looked kind of like he has ever since that rough outing he had in Baltimore. He's just kind of cruising, uh, you know, through his five, six innings. They get him out at a reasonable pitch count. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think he's allowed a home run since that start. So mm-hmm. uh, he's on a bit of heater right now, and that's good because, you know, it accompanies Luis Castillo and, and Robbie Ray, who are also pitching very well right now. Yeah, so a lot of good stuff out of the rotation, and uh, George Kirby's been a big part of that. Obviously, Robbie Ray and Luis Castillo, as you said, have been uh, very, very good as well. So, uh, And the Mariners finally getting some help from the offense, at least last night. We'll see if, you know, like you said, if that actually continues tonight and tomorrow. Uh, they got Eduardo uh, Rodriguez on the uh, bump for the Tigers tomorrow, which, uh, wow, uh, he disappeared, and now he's suddenly back. Um, 
I don't know, you know, when he actually returned. I uh, looked at the probables just now, and there he is. He's penciled in to start tomorrow for the Tigers. So we'll see how Eduardo Rodriguez looks. Um, now, you mentioned Chris Flexen, of course. Uh, they, uh, you know, they were able to use Flexen after he hadn't pitched for 11 days. So I, I think they needed to get him some sort of action, and this was the perfect opportunity to do it. And with his very first out in this outing, he earned his vesting option for 2023 we'll talk about what that means in just a moment but real quick a reminder this episode of locked on mariners is brought to you by bet online betonline.net is your number one source for all your pro and college football betting needs and sports info this season find all the latest football league developments great game matchups news and podcasts including this year's opening week games bet online is also your continued source for all your sporting wagering information including live betting esports and scores the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite sports and events including mlb mma boxing and golf head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action bet online is where the game starts and you're listening to the locked on mariners podcast thank you again for making us your first listen of the day just like you do here every single day we greatly appreciate your support so chris flexen with the first out that he got in his outing last night triggered his vesting option for 2023 it is an eight million dollar player option now for flexen so it's up to him now this offseason if he wants to stay in seattle or not and of course there won't be a spot in the rotation guaranteed to him so that is certainly going to play into the decision for, for Flexen. Uh, but $8 million is, is not nothing uh, for sure. You know, he might be able to get somewhere in that ballpark on the open market uh, it, with a chance to start. Uh, but there's no guarantee that that opportunity presents itself as well. Uh, but initially, this was going to be a club option. Uh, but because he has hit 300 innings in a Mariners uniform, it is now a player option for $8 million. Um, so what do you think? Just obviously we don't know, you know, how the rest of the season is going to go and we don't know how free agency is going to go, but what do you say the odds right now are that Chris Flexen is a Mariners uniform next year? Uh, well, first of all, congratulations to Chris. I know he's a big mm -hmm. listener of this show, so I want to make sure <laughs> we say congratulations. Uh, it's, it's a, it's a big deal, yeah. um, for, for somebody like Flexen who was out of major league baseball, uh, for a year. Yeah. Uh, you know, went to Korea, kind of re established some value, worked on his craft, kind of recommitted himself to being a major leaguer. Um, and you know, he, he gets rewarded for it. So it's good to see, um, overall the odds, I would say it's kind of hard to say. Um, my guess is, is that Flexen will want to, will, will want to start for somebody. Uh, that comes with some caveats. So there's not going to be a lot of uh, contenders who look at Chris Flexen and go, hmm, yeah, that's a guy we want to put at the back end of our rotation. Might be a few, but probably not a ton. Um, so, you know, maybe he just accepts Seattle and he battles Marco for the number five spot or whoever they bring in. Um, $8 million, again, is probably about what he can make on the open market AAV wise. Um, so if, if nobody wants to give him a multi-year deal, then it might make some sense to, to uh, just stay with Seattle. There's also kind of a, a tricky situation here uh, because Flexen, if he declines the option is arbitration eligible. Uh, so technically the Mariners could control him for another three years. Uh, my guess is, is that there was probably language written into the contract that if the options were declined, that Seattle would not, uh, would not uh, offer him arbitration and he would become an unrestricted free agent. Now uh, we see that a lot. Um, so it's, it's not uncommon, uh, with guys who pitch overseas, uh, they get that, that kind of protection. Um, so yeah, I don't know if Chris has that or not. I'm going to assume he does. My overall sense is, is that Chris is probably looking to, to pitch somewhere else next year. Um, I just don't know that opportunity is going to come and there's a, there's a chance. And this is what Flexen has to be careful of that he says no, declines the option, goes out there, looks for a multi-year deal or a guaranteed chance to start, doesn't find it, and then he's got to come back to the Mariners, and the Mariners say, well, we kind of spent some money here, so we can only give you $4 million. So it's a little bit of a tough spot to be in if you're flexing. Um, my, my hunch is that he probably hits the open market. And I think somebody will give him 
you know, maybe two and like 20 or something like that. Uh, somebody who's just kind of Baltimore, maybe Minnesota, maybe Toronto. Or, yeah. Just somebody who's looking for maybe a he's another filler. Dodgers guy, right? Like he's yeah, the Tyler sure. Anderson for the Dodgers this year. Right. I mean, I don't know the Rays. Like I, I think there are some teams mm-hmm. that would be interested in a guy like flex. And I just, I don't think that those teams are going to guarantee him starting spots. I think if he wants a guaranteed rotation spot, he's going to have to go to like a Pittsburgh or a Cincinnati or a place like that. And, that there that comes with a trade off because you're not going to be on a very good team uh, right. during that contract. So which what do you want? Do you want the chance to start or do you want uh, you know a good chance to go to the playoffs? And and technically Seattle can offer both to to flex in. It's just you know do they add another starting pitcher? Like do they go get Zach Eflin? And then if you're Chris Flexen, you're like I mean I don't have a shot. So we'll see what happens there. It's it's, it's all up to Chris and he's earned that right uh, based on how well he's played over the last few years. Um, so it's an interesting option that he'll have to, uh, he'll have to make a decision on. I think five days after the world series is typically how that goes. Mm -hmm. So we'll see how it works out for Chris. My, my gut is, is that he's pitching somewhere else next year. Now, just talking about the, uh, the player in general, um, and the whole situation in general, I mean, Jerry DePoto and and company, uh, should be very proud of their discovery of Flexen, uh, the work that they put into signing Flexen and, and, you know, um, figuring out that he was a fit for their team being right about it too i mean he's been worth every penny and then some uh over the last two years um i mean last year he was arguably their best starter (laughs) and then this year you know uh regressed of course um but still came through with some really solid starts some really solid moments and he can be useful out of the bullpen i i really like that role for chris flexen i kind of like the the long reliever type role for flexen uh down the road but um you know, just thinking about flexing, you know, when he was with the Mets and it didn't work out there, obviously. And then because it didn't work out there, he ended up not really getting an opportunity that he wanted in Major League Baseball. He had to go to the KBO and work there. And, you know, he dropped some weight and all this stuff. And, um, you know, he put the work in. Right. And he's earned this opportunity and he got one more shot to, to make it happen in Major League Baseball. And made it work and then some right like he you know mm-hmm. it's it's not that he's just been able to survive he's actually been able to find success and sustain success as well so that's that's huge for flexing uh it's a it's great for flexing that he's been able to get to this point 300 innings that's not nothing it really isn't you know to to be able to stay healthy and to be able to stay good enough to accrue that amount of innings on a team that is contending for the postseason over the last two years, the two years that he's been in Seattle, that's difficult to do. And he's been able to do that. So props to, to Chris Flexen. This is absolutely earned and uh, he's earned the right to, you know, do whatever he wants here. He can take the $8 million, which that's a great amount of money, uh, especially for, for Flexen, who again was down in Korea <laughs> not too long ago, uh, or he can get the, the chance to, you know, maybe find an opportunity to start elsewhere and, uh, continue to build on that. So, uh, love that. Um, it's awesome. It's it's really cool for uh, for Chris Flexens. All right, so let's um let's switch gears here. Let's talk about this thing that I've been DM'd. Like, okay, I've been DM'd this eight or nine times since last night. I don't think I've ever had our listeners DM me something that they wanted us to talk about on the show as much as this i've had maybe you know one or two people reach out about something here and there but never at this kind of volume people really want us to talk about jared kelnick and what he's been doing on his instagram so he's jared kelnick has unfollowed the seattle mariners i've verified this i've looked he's he's unfollowed the seattle mariners he's also taken some photos some posts down that are related to the mariners as well he hasn't taken all of them down he still has photos of him with like julio and there's a couple other photos of him in like mariners gear with a mariners logo on so it's not completely scrubbed of all mariners stuff but we've seen this now over the last few years with players not even just in major league baseball but other sports i mean wilson Contreras is you know one of the ones that comes to mind here he scrubbed his account of all cubs stuff and he's still with cubs kyler murray did this with uh with the cardinals and you know with the arizona cardinals of the nfl and ended up signing an extension with them anyway so really at the end of the day none of this really matters 
I don't think this matters. <laughs> I, I really don't. I, I, and at the end of the day, Jared Kelnick is still 23 years old. 23 year olds do irrational stuff sometimes. If he's actually lashing out here, I mean, yes, he does need to get his priority straight, but I'm not going to blow this up into a huge thing. I don't think it's a huge thing. I don't really think it's anything that holds any bearing over Jerry Kelnick's future in Seattle, really. Uh, ultimately, that comes down to, to what he does on the field. Um, but, I mean, clearly, maybe uh, maybe if this is actually him lashing out, there's some frustration here. I don't know what it would be about if it's about him not making the expanded roster. Uh, I don't I don't know. I'm not going to speculate on this, so really. What do you think about it? I could not care less. I could I try, really but I would either. fail. I <laughs> could not care less. The Mariners are on the verge of breaking the longest playoff drought in North American sports, and this is the stuff you guys are DMing us about? This. A, tw- a 23-year-old child unfollowing people on Instagram? Like, this is high school? Who cares? It's the biggest load of BS that is ever reported. And it's not just you guys. We see it all the time. We see it with Debo scrubbing the account of 49er stuff. We see it with Kyler doing it with, with the Cardinals. And automatically it goes on to Twitter or goes on. Even ESPN will be like, oh, my God, is this is this the end? Or the, who cares? It's an Instagram picture. It's an Instagram account. Who cares? It does not matter. It is irrelevant. And you know what? Jared Kelnick is irrelevant to this Mariners team. I don't care if we see Kelnick again this year. He hasn't earned it. So we can stop with this whole like, oh, no, do you call him up just to appease him? For what? He's bad. He's a bad major leaguer right now. Why do we care what Jared Kelnick thinks about what the Mariners are doing? Jared Kelnick has worked himself into a point where if the Mariners never call up Jared Kelnick and they just released him, nobody cares. Literally, you, there will be no Mariner fan out there that's like, oh, man, what are you doing? No, you totally get it. You understand it. Who cares? Jared Kelnick is irrelevant to the plans of the Seattle Mariners. That's a credit to the Seattle Mariners, who, by the way, are playing really good baseball right now and are trying to break a playoff drought. Who cares what's going on on Instagram? Yeah. It doesn't matter. I'd rather talk about the stupid Sam Haggerty headband they're giving away on September 13th. I don't care about Jared Kelnick. He's irrelevant. I don't care. Jared Kelnick's upset and he wants to whine and cry that he's not give, been given an opportunity despite receiving over 500 plate appearances in the big leagues. I don't care. That's his right. He's 23. He gets to be a little petulant child sometimes. I don't care. Okay, are there maturity issues? Maybe. I don't know. Get out of the gym. Get into the cage. I don't know what to tell you, Jared. You need to be better. I don't care if he scrubbed his account. I don't. I could not care less. This is the biggest BS thing that we ever have to cover in sports is we have to play, you know, social media detective and try and figure, well, he kept the Julio picture, so maybe he wants to stay in Seattle so he could play with who? Who cares? I do not. Jared Kelnick could demand a trade tomorrow, and I would say trade him. I don't care. Get rid of him. Jared Kelnick means nothing to me. He means nothing to the future of the Mariners. If he's good, great. Bonus. If he's not, who cares? You've won 90 games two years in a row, or you're on track to at least. Essentially, without him, you found your superstar. You found your three other all-stars from the minor league system. Who cares if Jared Kelnick works? Who cares if he's mad? Who cares if he's upset? Don't you want him upset anyways if he was? Don't you want him to work harder this offseason? Don't you want him to be motivated? Don't you want him to understand that he doesn't have a, play, a roster spot guaranteed to him? What are we doing? Who cares what Jared Kelnick thinks? We are three weeks, four weeks away from breaking the longest playoff drought in North American sports. And we're talking about this? Yeah. And come on. Yeah. Yeah. Be better, just, people. Be better. It, it's just an unnecessary distraction here at a, a very good point in time for the Seattle Mariners. Uh, now, keep in mind, this is also, you know, the same guy that that went to Bob Nightingale of USA Today and told him, you know, that I'm being treated unfairly. The Mariners are service timing me, blah, 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 blah. And, you know, when he just wasn't ready. Wrong. He clearly, he clearly wasn't ready at the time. Like, he still isn't ready. He still isn't ready to face Major League pitching. We saw it again when he got called up here for a little bit of time, you know, after Julio got hurt. He's just not ready. He's just not capable of being a, you know, contributing Major Leaguer for a contending team right now. It's just not, like, it's just not in the cards. And I get that, you know, maybe there's some pressure now placed up, uh, placed upon him because, you know, his window to, to make it in Seattle specifically is starting to close. You know, the path to him being a successful big leaguer in Seattle is starting to become murky. I get it. 
I get there, you know, he might be pressing a little bit. He might be frustrated. Yeah. Plus, he's, you know, he continues to have success down in AAA, but mm-hmm. that's not equating to success at the major league level. And, you, you know, know we've whose talked fault about... that is? It's not the Seattle Mariners' fault. So grow up. Yeah. And so, I, you I don't... know, you and I have talked about what might be leading to these struggles for him as well. And mm-hmm. for me, and, you know, and, and for you as well, it's the physicality. It's just he's too muscle bound right now and he's too tight and he's too stiff. And it's just, you know, it's cut his bat speed in like half and he's not able to catch up to fastballs i mean that's been the big issue right he'll get a center cut fastball and just swing right through it you know i can't even count how many times we've seen that from jerry kelnick at the major league level there are significant things that he has to work on to find success at the major league level and he's probably going to need a whole off season's worth of time to do that plus because he's going to need to like shed some muscle i think he's going to need to do that so yeah so there are Bigger things at play here, <laughs> really. Both for Jerry Kelnick and and the Seattle Mariners, this is a non-story. This is a non-story. This it doesn't matter. Like like you said, you know, it's the Mariners are at a an incredibly high point right now in their organization's history. Really, I mean, there are they are on the verge of ending a twenty-year playoff drought. And right now their playoff pods are at 94.9% on fan graphs. And that will likely go up if they win tonight. And if they win tomorrow, like that will just continue to go up and up and up as, as long as they keep on winning. And so the reality of that is becoming more apparent. And what we're focusing on today is Jared Kelnick deleting pictures off of Instagram and I'm following the Mariners. I just, I don't think that we're focusing on the right things here, folks. And Kelnick specifically, look, if he wants to be a distraction, if he wants to lash out, go for it. You're a 23 year old. You're going to do stupid stuff. You're going to make mistakes like this, whatever. Right. I don't think that says anything about his future in Seattle. I don't think it means that the Mariners are going to suddenly trade him. I do think though, like if it, if it starts to leak into how he, um, you know, how he acts in the clubhouse or how he's, you know, receptive or you know, rather not receptive to, you know, advice from the Mariners organization or, you know, coaches or what have you. And that becomes, you know, that turns into an actual problem in the clubhouse down in Tacoma. Then, yeah, I mean, Jerry DePoto and and crew, like, they're obviously not going to have that. They don't, you know, they don't even mess with guys that have those issues for the most part. That's why Gene Segura got traded, you know, or partly at least, you know, so like, that like that could be an issue here that could be a story here but right now that's all just speculative right that's all speculation and there's just too many good other things that are going on right now in the the mariners world that i would rather focus on than just waste my time speculating on how jared kelnick feels right now because like you said jared kelnick right now to the mariner to the 2022 mariners is irrelevant like he doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things of this team right we tried it we tried to get him to be a part of this team. We tried to get him to be relevant for 2022. Just didn't work out. doesn't mean that he's irrelevant for 2023, but right now, you know, you can't move forward thinking that Jerry Kelnick is going to be a part of your future in any sort of way because he hasn't earned that right. He hasn't given you, a, you know, the opportunity to bank on that at all. <laughs> and, you know, this goes to an even bigger discussion that, you know, the Mariners this year or this, this winter, when they start to retool this team for next season, whatever that may look like, they cannot do the same thing that they did last off season where Jerry Kelnick had a straight shot to the major league roster. Just can't do it. Can't have that. So Kelnick's got a lot to work on clearly both, you know, mentally and physically. And, uh, you know, I still hope for the best for him, but I don't care at the end of the day that he, he unfollowed the Mariners and deleted some photos. Because, again, like, it usually doesn't even lead to anything, right? Debo Samuel is still a 49er. Kyler Murray is still a Cardinal. Wilson Contreras is still a Cub. Like, it doesn't matter. So I don't think this has, this holds any bearing over anything in the future. So let's just, let's chill. Let's chill, folks. Let's Let's retune here. Let's get refocused. Let's get back on track. Let's talk about this really, really fun ball club that we're seeing right before our eyes. This team that is, you know, we're probably all going to remember forever as the team that finally ended it. So let's let's focus on that. Let's not focus on, on a player that's down in AAA right now. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Anything you want to add before we hop off here? 
doesn't even have to be Miss Celtic our, related. Miss our DMs with that garbage. We're not talking about it again. It's the biggest did you get waste DM'd of time. By it? Did you get No, DM'd I'm mad that you did. <laughs> I got literally like eight or nine DMs about it. Like Don't I waste get, our time with this. <laughs> I'd rather you guys start asking about Trevor's story again. Like God, this is oh God. It's a It's everything story. that I hate about sports. Yeah, it's just the the off field drama. I mean, we're like, are we are we gonna get classified by the YouTube algorithm as like a, a tea channel, a drama channel? We're spilling the tea, talking about Jared Kelnick. <laughs> like, I didn't even know that was a thing, but okay. Yeah, that's my my wife has exposed me to a, a portion of YouTube that I I wish I had never knew about. It's incredibly toxic. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a uh, that's a discussion for another time and on a definitely not a, a show like this but that's gonna do it for our show thank you so much for joining us here on the locked on mariners podcast for colby fat dude i'm tidy gonzalez be sure to give us a follow on twitter at lo underscore mariners you can follow inside the mariners at inside mariners you can follow me at dane gonzalez the c-a-n-e g-n-z-l-z and colby at cpat 11 that's cpat 11 you can also find all that stuff in the description of this episode and thank you again for making us your first listen of the day now for your second listen go check out the ultimate pro football preview 2022 an eight episode extravaganza to get you ready for the nfl season with the local team experts of the locked on podcast network plus a betting angle from lee sterling of locked on bets all combining into one ultimate nfl preview search for ultimate pro football preview 2022 on your odyssey app youtube or wherever you get your podcasts and with that have yourself a beautiful baseball day we'll see you tomorrow peace